I developed this concept called maximum recoverable volume. Imagine building muscle faster than 99% of people, training smarter, not harder, by following the recommendations of leading exercise scientists like Dr. Mike Israetel and Professor Brad Schoenfeld. In this video, I'll show you 10 of their most effective, evidence-based strategies to help you build muscle faster than you ever thought possible. And this is critical, not only for our health today, but for our long-term well-being too. A growing body of evidence suggests that higher muscle strength is associated with lower all-cause death rates. So let's dive into the first of these 10 strategies. Have you ever heard the saying, train insane or remain the same? Well, what if I told you that training too hard might actually be holding us back? This is where the concept of maximum recoverable volume comes into play. Dr. Mike Israetel coined this concept, and it's all about finding that perfect balance, pushing your body to its limits without overdoing it. If you exceed your maximum recoverable volume, you're not only stalling your progress, you could actually start to lose muscle strength. Think of maximum recoverable volume as the most training volume your body can handle while still recovering and progressing. It's like walking a tightrope. You want to push yourself, but not so far that you fall off. The tricky part is that your maximum recoverable volume is highly individual. It varies depending on factors like your genetics, training experience, and even how stressed you are in your day-to-day -day life. Let me give you a story that illustrates this. Imagine a construction crew repairing a building after a storm. If the storm is so severe that that it causes more damage than the crew can repair each day. The building will gradually deteriorate no matter how hard the crew works. It's the same thing to our muscles. If we exceed our maximum recoverable volume, our body can't keep up with the damage we're inflicting, and instead of growing stronger, we actually start losing muscle. Studies show that when we exceed our maximum recoverable volume, we're likely to hit a wall leading to overtraining symptoms like fatigue, injury, and muscle loss. On the flip side, if we train below our maximum recoverable volume, we're leaving gains on the table. The key is to experiment to adjust our training volume and find our sweet spot. Now here's the thing, most of us, the issue isn't overtraining, it's actually getting out there and doing the work. We all have busy lives, and finding the time to train can be a challenge. That's why it's so important to make every minute of exercise count. Once we've got the motivation and the consistency down, the next step is figuring out how to maximize our gains in the time we have. And that leads us onto the second strategy, optimizing our training volume and frequency. Let's start with volume. Specifically, how much training should we do to maximize our muscle growth? We often hear that more volume equals more gains, but it's not that simple. There's a Goldilocks principle at play here. Too little volume, and we're not stimulating growth enough, but too much, and we're not giving our bodies enough time to recover. The sweet spot for most people falls somewhere in between the minimum effective volume and the maximum recoverable volume. Minimum effective volume is the least amount of work we need to see the gains, while maximum recoverable volume, again, is the most we can do without overtraining. Our goal is to train in the Goldilocks zone between these two points. Research shows that training between 10 to 20 sets per muscle group per week is generally effective for most people. However, some studies have shown that increasing volume up to 30 or even 40 sets per week can still provide benefits depending on the individual's recovery capacity. The key takeaway, we need to find the volume that works for us based on our recovery and how our bodies respond to the training. As for frequency, how we distribute these sets throughout the week is flexible. You could do all 15 sets of chest exercises in one session, or you might prefer to spread them out over two or three sessions through the week. The number of sets is is what matters most. Some people find that they recover better and perform more effectively by spreading the volume out through the week, while others prefer to hit a muscle group hard in one session. Start on the lower end of the volume range and gradually increase both the number of sets and the frequency if that suits your recovery and performance. Pay close attention to how your body responds. If we're feeling strong and we're seeing progress, we're in the right zone, but if we're constantly tired and fatigued, it might be time to pull back a bit. The next part of the equation is intensity and how many repetitions we should do per set. The old school 8 to 12 repetition range is that really best for muscle building. We used to prescribe loading recommendations based on the repetition continuum, but recent research has shown that that concept, it is outdated. While using heavier loads that allow for one to five repetitions per set before reaching failure is generally the recommendation for maximizing muscle strength gains, it turns out that significant strength gains can still be achieved with lower loads that allow for more than 20 repetitions per set before reaching failure. 
The overall difference in strength gains between heavy and light loads is actually quite small, and one advantage of using lighter loads is a reduced risk of injury. The downside? It takes longer to reach failure, so each set might take more time, but this approach can be particularly useful in situations where time is limited, and this is where the concept of exercise snacks comes in handy. So on days that I work at the clinic, for example, I don't have time to go to the gym. So during my paperwork breaks, I do a set of bodyweight exercises, such as push-ups. I know that by still getting these sets throughout the day, I'm stimulating muscle growth. But there's another factor we need to consider to maximize our muscle strength gains rest intervals. Research shows that performing resistance exercises with short rest intervals defined as less than two minutes can diminish strength gains, particularly in well-trained individuals. On the other hand, longer rest intervals, so more than two minutes, allow us to recover better between sets, leading to greater strength improvements over time. This is especially important if we're focusing on heavy lifting and maximizing our strength potential. In this section, we've talked a lot about training to failure, but what exactly does that mean, and is it necessary for optimal muscle building? Well, training to failure means performing a set till we literally can't complete another repetition with good form. While this sounds intense, it might not be necessary or even beneficial for everyone. The evidence suggests that while training to failure can be effective, it's not a requirement for muscle growth especially if it leads to excessive fatigue and longer recovery times. A study from Professor Schoenfeld found that lifting to failure versus stopping one to two repetitions short resulted in similar strength gains when training volume was the same. Another study noted that going to failure can increase fatigue and delay recovery, which might hinder our progress if we're not careful. The takeaway? We don't need to train to failure on every set. In fact, leaving a repetition or two in the tank, it might allow us to train more consistently and recover better, leading to greater gains over time. It's a good idea to save training to failure for our last set or for specific exercises where we feel it's safe to push our limits. But now we need to talk about how to optimize each repetition. We've all seen it, people at the gym loading up the bar and doing half repetitions. But if we're serious about muscle building, we need to be using a full range of motion in our exercises. Why? Well, because using a full range of motion in our exercises maximizes both muscle strength and growth. When we train through a full range of motion, we're working all our muscles at their most stretched point in their most contracted positions. This not only builds more strength, but it also leads to greater muscle growth. Think of it this way, a muscle that's fully stretched and then fully contracted is a muscle that's fully worked. But a full range of motion isn't the only thing we need to be doing to maximize the benefit of each repetition, and this is where the sixth strategy comes in. Did you know that lowering the weight might be just as important, if not more so, than lifting it? Most of us focus on the lifting phase of an exercise, the concentric phase, but what about the lowering phase or the eccentric phase? Well, it turns out that the eccentric phase is where a lot of the muscle building magic happens. Eccentric training is crucial because it creates significant muscle tension and damage, which leads to greater muscle growth during recovery. Our muscles can handle far more weight during the eccentric phase compared to the concentric phase, allowing us to overload them more effectively. And the research supports this idea. Traditional resistance exercise, which involves both lifting and lowering weights, produces greater improvements in muscle strength rather than focusing on the lifting phase alone. This means that by giving attention to the eccentric phase, we can enhance our overall strength and muscle growth. So, how can we incorporate this into our routine? Well, try lowering the weight slowly and with control, taking three to four seconds during the squat or bench press, for example. Personally, I like to push hard during the concentric phase and then go slow during the eccentric phase. This way, along with a full range of motion, I make sure to get the most out of every repetition. And do you want to keep making gains week after week? Well, here's the secret. Progressive overload is the cornerstone of any successful muscle building program. Simply put, it means gradually increasing the demands on our muscles over time. Whether it's by lifting more weight, doing more reps, or increasing the volume, progressive overload ensures that our muscles are constantly challenged and forced to grow. Without progressive overload, our muscles will adapt to our current routine and our gains will plateau. The key is making small, consistent increases in our training to keep our muscles under tension and growing. Research consistently shows that subjects who progressively increased their training load over time, they saw significantly greater muscle growth compared to those that kept their load constant. 
Every week, we should try to increase our weight, repetitions, or sets slightly. Even adding one repetition or one kilogram to the bar can make a big difference over time. The important thing is to keep pushing our limits, but always listen to our bodies and avoid injury. Now, everything we've gone through in the video so far, frankly speaking, has explained how to damage our muscles in the most effective way possible, but that's only half the equation. The eighth recommendation is recovery. Recovery is often overlooked, but it's just as important as the time we spend lifting weights. In fact, recovery is where the magic happens, where our muscles repair, grow, and become stronger. Without proper recovery, we're just spinning our wheels. When we lift weights, we're actually causing small tears in our muscle fibers, and it's during the recovery process that these fibers repair and grow back stronger a process known as super compensation. But here's the catch, if we don't give our muscles time to recover, we won't see those gains. Research consistently shows that adequate recovery time is critical for muscle growth and strength gains. Insufficient recovery leads to increased fatigue, reduced performance, and a higher risk of injury. So to optimize our recovery, we need to ensure that we're getting enough sleep, eating a balanced diet that's rich in lean protein, and taking rest days when needed. Specifically, research from Professor Brad Schoenfeld suggests that the optimal protein intake to maximize our response to resistance exercise is around 1.6 grams of protein per kilogram of body weight per day. Additionally, we might consider using techniques like active recovery, light activities that promote blood flow without taxing our muscles, to enhance our recovery process. The ninth strategy ties everything together, and then the tenth strategy will show us how to really put the foot on the gas of muscle building. One size does doesn't fit all when it comes to muscle building. What works for our friend might not work for us, and that's okay. The key is to personalize our training based on our unique body, goals, and lifestyle. Dr. Mike Israetel often emphasizes that individual differences, like muscle fiber composition, recovery capacity, and life stresses, play a huge role in how we respond to training. His advice is to experiment and to adjust our approach based on what works for us, rather than blindly following a generic program. We should start by tracking our workouts, pay attention to how our body feels and performs, and adjust our training accordingly. Don't be afraid to experiment with different repetition ranges, volumes, and exercises until we find what works for us. For the final recommendation, this is when we're ready to take our training to the next level. Let's talk about supramaximal training. If we've been training for a while and we're looking to break through a plateau, supramaximal training might be just what we need. This advanced technique involves lifting weights that are heavier than our one rep max. Yes, you heard that right, to maximize our strength and muscle gains. Supramaximal training focuses on the eccentric phase, where we can handle more weight than the concentric phase. By overloading our muscles in this way, we can stimulate new muscle growth and strength gains that might be hard to achieve with traditional training. One way to do this is to lift a weight with both arms and then lower the weight with one arm, like in a one-arm eccentric dumbbell curl. And to keep making gains week after week, we also need to consider periodization in our training plan. Periodized resistance training involves systematically varying our training intensity, volume, and exercises over time to avoid plateaus and to continually challenge our muscles. Research shows that periodized plans have a moderate effect on improving our one rep max compared to non-periodized training plans. By periodically adjusting our training variables, we can ensure that we're consistently pushing our muscles and pushing our limits to make progress. Whether it's through increasing the weight, changing up our repetition ranges, or cycling between different training phases, periodization helps to keep our muscles guessing and growing. Now it's time to put this knowledge into action. Start by incorporating these strategies into your training and watch your progress skyrocket. But don't overlook protein intake. Make sure to check out this next video here on some pivotal new research about how to best use protein to maximize our strength. And a massive thank you to all of the Patreons supporting the channel.